Good evening and welcome. Thank you so much for joining us tonight for the third instalment of the Cola Bold Live Talk series. I'm Susie Anetta, Editor-in-Chief of Design Anthology magazine, and I'll be your host for tonight. Now, before I introduce our very special guest tonight, I'd like to pass to Angel Yang, President of Kitchen and Bath Asia Pacific for Cola Company. Good evening, everyone. I'm Angel Yang from Cola Company. I'm really excited to see all of you here again virtually, and I thank you for joining us tonight at the Cola Bowl Talk Live. We are operating in a new reality globally with the COVID-19, changing many aspects of our daily lives. In the past few months, we all have been trying very hard to adapt to the new living environment and the styles. Cola Company is committed to do everything we can to provide a high level of service while ensuring the health and the safety of our associates, customers, and the business partners. This Cola Bowl Talk event is a global virtual initiative aimed at bringing the latest design trends to you from a virtual platform and to share design inspiration by experts. The first two Bowl Talks in Asia Pacific region overwhelmed with Andre Fu, Jean-Michel Gatti, a trend around the 3,000 audience and the viewers. We're very grateful for lots of positive feedbacks. And today, we are having the third round in Asia with the theme of dimension of well-being. When we talk about our well-being in relation to our physical space, we're talking about more than just how we feel or our mood. Well-being is a basic fundamental state that encompasses our physical, mental, and spiritual health. It's all about more than what the space looks like. It's about how it functions, how we interact with it, how we can respond to our changing needs. With an emphasis on the role of bathroom and the kitchen as unexpected source of well-being, Cola's role in developing products that empower all of you architects and the designers to foster well-being through the spaces you create. Today is our great honor to have the internationally renowned architect, Mr. Su Ken Chen, the founder of SCDA, join us as our speaker. Mr. Chen's design can be found all around the globe, from the concrete jungle of Tokyo and New York to tropical locales like Bali and the Maldives. His design captured the spiritual essence of a place while remaining environmentally and culturally sustainable. Today, very exciting, Mr. Chen is going to introduce and explain the relationship among architecture, interior design, and well-being a holistic approach. And now, before giving the floor to Mr. Chen, I hope and wish each of you will stay very safe and healthy. This is hard days along the way, but we, Cola, will come through this stronger than ever. Cola, together we can do this. We always have, and we always will. Thank you so much for that introduction, Angel. It's now my great pleasure to welcome Su Kian Chan from SCDA, who's joining us tonight from Singapore. Su Kian, I'm going to pass to you for your presentation about Suri Bali, which is going to make us all want to travel sooner rather than later. And I'll join you back here in about 10 minutes when you're done for Great. a bit of a conversation. Great to see you, Susie. Thank, Thank you very you. much. All right. So um, today I'd like to share with you the story of Suri Bali. Uh, it's a very special story to me. Uh, the year was 2004, and my wife and I were in Bali for the weekend, and we wanted to have a holiday home. And in the cafe that we were sitting in, the waiter then said, hey, you know, my uncle has this wonderful piece of land. So this is the land. When I saw it, I fell in love with it. There was volcanoes, authentic rice fields, and the strength of the Indian Ocean, as well as the black diamond sand beach. There was something enormously spiritual and positive energy about this place. So we decided to get the land. And from the land, uh, we needed amenities. And somehow, the idea grew into a hotel. So what grounds a project of its place? In the beginning, I was looking for an inspiration to start off the project. 
then I chant upon Trihita Karana, which is the Bali uh, principles of harmony with God, people, and nature. So with that in mind, I sought to look for clues and cues. I observed the rhythm of life in Bali, how there's always religious worships, and the agrarian culture tradition of the old of rice farming, and, and then uh, the land itself. So the first thing I did really was to sit with the village head and say, hey, um, we're going to do this together. He said, you, you, you have to, to speak to the Pamanku or, or the, the local priest. So I made an appointment with the priest, and we walked the land. And to my surprise, he said, you need to build 10 temples, in addition to the big one on the uh, peninsula. So I was like, 10 temples. And then he said, you need to allow people to walk through on ceremonies to your hotel. So what initially was a shock to me of opening up the space, uh, in the end became a generator of the design. The other thing really was I wanted to have uh, a rice fields that's working. And then I got consultation with the Subak Irrigation Head. So in the end, you see all these diagrams, meaning that we have all these constraints on the site of allowing the village to integrate with, with the hotel. And hence the site plan. But I have to say, um, site planning when dictated by constraints of site and culture usually you know, comes up to something good. The other thing I, I, I understood was people. There was a, a pureness and simplicity about the people. They work in the, in the land and they worship. There's wellness in the community. This is Bali of the old. Um, you know, I, I cherish seeing the simplicity of the kids playing on the beach, the elderly. So we made a decision to hire 90% of our staff from the village. Most of them have had some kind of training uh, had, and in the industry already. To further intertwine the hotel with community, um, we brought in the dance school and established it within hotels. So the village children get to practice the dance and then perform for the guests. And there's also an English school for language. All these initiatives are meant to create a sense of authentic. And by interacting with them, they get to learn about climate and preserving the environment. The environment plays a big role in Suri Bali. The first thing that I did was look at the plants and look at the materials. I found this beautiful quarry about two kilometers from the site. Beautiful volcanic stone and immediately used it as the staple of the hotel. A few kilometers away was a terracotta making village and I commissioned them to make artifacts as well as wall coverings and tiles. Um, wherever we can, we use local produce, and what we can't find, we had a spice garden. The environment is important to us, and we are lucky to have these leatherback turtles come in seasonally. So that's a program for us to conserve the eggs and make sure they're large enough to survive, and then release together a religious ceremony when the time is right. So how does that influence wellness in design? I truly believe that when you bring in the community and respect the culture and use material from the land and tap onto the energy of the place, the site planning falls in place. There's harmony in design. While the layout is based on the, the village and the palace, so all the villas are designed to have walls and pavilions. When you first arrived, you come into a tranquil water court, you circumambulate and around the perimeter, you, you make a left, go up some steps, and then you, you are in connection with the ocean for the first time. You hear the waves and you smell the salt in the air. Everything is naturally ventilated in the public areas. Uh, it's designed as if you're coming back to somebody's home, very low key. And where possible, materials and plants and artifacts are from the place. When you ascend a set of stairs, you finally descend on the biggest square, which is by the ocean. This is where the communal spaces are located. You have the pool, the library, the restaurant, and the bar. This is a picture of the bar at sunset. It, it fits in quite effortlessly, effortlessly with the environment. Now, wellness is important to us, and the central heart of wellness is our spa. In this spa, it's designed to have a 
an opening in the middle of the hut with a spa. So rain comes in and air comes in. Uh, it is crafted of the local parasclating stone. And the concept for this spa really is about resurrection. Um, you're tired, so you're resurrected from the dead, from the darkness, gradually to the light. In the rooms of the spa, we made an effort to customize each room differently with designs from the artisans from the village. On culinary front, our chef goes to the market every morning to get daily produce. Um, and the design of the restaurants primarily used all the local materials. What you see at the end of the wall is actually mangrove roots that we salvage and made into artwork. This is the Ombak Bar. The villas remain the heart of the hotel. This is where the guest experiences uh, the culture and the relaxation. We have a 10 bedroom villa, a six bedroom villa, a four bedroom, two and one bedroom. The lines are contemporary, but the principles are based on tropical architecture and Bali architecture. All the screens and the glass doors slides open into the environment. We designed the sofa and the product and the lamp. And holistically, I think all these elements would come together and engage the environment. What you see here is a cauldron. The cauldron is used for batik dyeing um, and it's used as a planter in this case. All the villas engage the view of landscape and ocean. From the room, you're able to open up the sliding doors and bring in the environment. The individual villas each have private plunge pools and you can even swim from the side into the bathrooms. So this is a chance for SCD and myself to do everything from landscape, interior graphics to product design. Bathrooms remain the heart of the project. We have several configurations of outdoor bath, sunken bathtubs that connect you with the views of the ocean and also floating vanities centered in the bathroom itself. On the other side, there are villas that engage the mountain and the rice fields, and these villas bring in landscape. It's as if the paddy fields come right up to your villa. So to complete this design holistically, we undertook to design the product itself. What you see on the cutlery is actually inspired by terracotta and black sand, and the even bottle owned waters, so there's no plastics at all in the resort. The amenities are biodegradable, bamboo and paper mache. Uh, and even the collaterals are inspired by the stone patterns, the rice fields and the ocean. Other products have been designed candles, lights and specialized chairs for the hotel. And what does the future hold for wellness and hotel design? At SCDA, we, we realize that we need to advance to the next level so we're in partnership now with Palais for the Oceans, which is a global organization dedicated to ocean conservation. We are the global design partner of Palais, and we are designing the first research center in Maldives. So Suri Bali will also serve as a launch pad for the ocean research in Indonesia. When all these elements come together, you see this harmony of the architecture integrating with nature and landscape. So Suri Bali will embrace the spirit of the, our times and serve a bigger agenda for a new hotel concept that promotes wellness and harmony with our environment. This is the goal of uh, Suri Bali at this moment. I'm happy to share this story with you. Thank you very much. Thanks, Sue. Um, I can actually say from first-hand experience that it's actually even more beautiful in real life. So thank you for sharing the story with us. Um, you're in a very enviable, enviable position as the owner and the developer and the designer of Suri Bali. Uh, I'd love to know from your perspective what you think the benefits are um, being in that position and to be able to design with a holistic approach. Well, every architect dreams of being their own client, whether it's your kitchen or your bathroom, your house. This is a dream come true for me. 
when I wear all three hats, I feel um, responsible, but I do have control. And I'm able to push myself to try to design every aspect. Um, traditionally, an architect works with clients, clients' representation, and usually too many consultants. As a result of having so many people, the vision is usually diluted. So to me, this is uh, an opportunity that I couldn't pass up. I can imagine. Uh, now, you touched on the bathrooms earlier, and obviously with tonight being hosted by our friends at Cola, it was uh, only natural that we would end up talking about bathrooms. So uh, I'd love to hear about your thoughts in the role that the bathroom plays when you're designing a resort like Surrey and how that contributes to a sense of well-being for the guests. The bathrooms usually are a central part of a hotel, especially in a resort, because slowness is the reason you go to a hotel. You want to feel well. So the bathroom has to be designed in such a way that is uh, leisurely to use and in some ways different. Like, for example, a bathtub that is sunken on eye level to see the ocean or just showering outdoors. So to that extent, the bathroom designs and equipment needs to be well selected. Uh, they need to, to, to be a design that fulfills the purpose of, with the economy of means and needs to enhance the experience when you're using these fittings. And I guess on that, just to, ex to sort of expand on that, that uh, topic, what role would you say the hardware plays, um, you know, with the fixtures and the fittings within a bathroom but also a spa? I think when you and I spoke perhaps last week, we were talking about well-being and particularly at Suri Bali that that sense of well-being ex extends well beyond just the spa. But within that and uh, that space and within the bathrooms, what role or how important is the choice of fixtures and hardware? I think when you think of a bathroom design holistically, the, the fittings and the hardware are essential elements because those are the touch points where the guests actually handle the fittings. It has to feel right and the design has to harmonize with the overall intent. And most of all, technologically, it should be easy to use and also serve to enhance the phenological experience of taking a shower or taking a bath. Yeah, and so, you know, now that we're living in this uh, COVID-19 era and everyone is um, particularly conscious of what we're touching and hygiene, uh, you know, a company like Cola, which has quite a large selection of products and hardware that are touch-free and automated and hygiene-focused, I'm, I'm curious to hear what your thoughts are on where technology and innovation uh, will influence the future of design, particularly for well-being. How much of a, uh, an influence do you see that becoming down the track? I think at this moment is the conversation centers on rethinking product design as well. People need to feel safe um, and, and less contact means more hygiene. But over and above, I think when you have um, sort of sensor motion fittings, it also aids in conserving the resource of water. So I think in terms of design, after this pandemic, designers will rethink um, not just motionless detectors, but what it means to actually enjoy the fitting as well without touching it. Um, so moving on from that topic, we, when we chatted earlier, we talked a lot about authenticity and I think that was a word that you used a couple of times when we were talking about Suri Bali and approaching the design of that particular project from a holistic viewpoint. I'd love to hear from your perspective what authenticity means to you in that context. Authentic is a very general word. It can be applied to any circumstances, whether it's in a city or in a resort. But generally, to me, authentic means to distill, to distill elements to its essence, um, not to over-embellish, to design with economy and means, to be able to express the materiality in the correct way, but also to integrate craft and culture of a particular place. And that's new luxury. Being authentic is new luxury. I agree. And why do you think it's important to be approaching a resort like Bali, or maybe any project at all for that matter, from a holistic viewpoint? I mean, it, obviously, 
when you work with that philosophy, it touches on so many aspects. But why is it, um, why is it important to you? Um, first of all, to design a hotel that taps on wellness, you have to be sensitive enough to, to kind of feel the energy of the particular land. And I think uh, for a designer to be able to control the holistic aspects of design would mean be able to harness all the elements of the site and the conditions of culture to create a very sensitive resort. Uh, collaboration is good when you can find like-minded consultants. And we still collaborate with people. But the important thing is that in collaboration, everybody needs to have the same mindset. Uh, people is something else that you touched on earlier when we had an earlier conversation. And I think your words were that the, the future is people or the future is about people. Are you able to expand a bit on that for us tonight? I think uh, there was a general statement that I made because the world uh, was on pause for a couple of months and they're on pause simultaneously. And even myself, all of us have had time to rethink what is important. Um, and I think at the end of the day, most people come out with the idea that um, understanding humanity and the environment is important. Uh, being optimistic is important. Uh, and being inclusive is important because this pandemic has also uh, created stark uh, focus on various groups because various groups experience a pandemic differently. So you realize that life is fragile and going forward, this will affect our thinking and that extends to designers as well. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I'm just going to check if we have any questions from the audience because I know we didn't have time for very many with the last session. Can I check that we've got, we have? Okay, all right. I'm, I'm just going to reach for my phone because that's where the questions are coming through from the audience. Um, we do. Okay, great. So one, the first question is that obviously the Suri brand is owned by you. It was your development. You have Suri Bali and there's also New York. And I think you mentioned perhaps earlier that Niseko might be the next one. Um, what, how would you describe the brand positioning of the resort or the, the actual hmm. brand itself, Suri? Well, Suri came from a combination of both my name and my wife's name. We are both designers. And base, basically, Suri brand is really um, a pure expression of what we like as designers. And Suri brand is about what I just presented, which is really getting to the root of, of the place and having a holistic uh, design control to bring in the best of a particular locale. Beyond, beyond that, it's not just about the hardware. I think hospitality means finding people with a big heart and with a big spirit. And it was easy enough for us to do that in Bali. But even in our New York Surrey, we managed to find people, uh, a diversity of people from New York City, which is a melting pot, and they're all lovely. And they all exude a New York characteristics uh, of that particular place. So th that's what Suri Brand is. It's, it's really trying to design something that's rooted in culture. Fantastic. Uh, there's a question here about um, the SCDA style, I suppose. So it's more of a general question about your work uh, as an architect, but also as a multidisciplinary designer. So the question is, what elements define your style? I, I think uh, style varies. What defines SCDA is actually a structure or a language that has been continuously reinforced over a period of 20, 25 years. Um, so it's less the style, rather the underlying design structure. And I believe that structure is clear only because I was able to articulate it to the studio. And, and, and that is a vehicle for us to design. But beyond the structure of the design, it can absorb climate, culture, and place. So in Bali, it takes on a bit of the Balinese element with uh, hand-crafted construction, whereas in other places, it takes on another element. Fantastic. Uh, another question is, um, and this might be a tough one, which projects are you most proud of? might be difficult to single out a, a few, but uh, 
if there's any that you're... Well, there's, there's many projects that I'm proud of, some better than others. And um, we are always trying to improve and get it closer to perfection. But obviously, Suri Bali, um, with all these imperfections, has a special place in my heart because I was able to actually do what I want in my own time and being on the process from beginning to end. And even now, operating the hotel and seeing guests enjoy the fruits of the product. Yeah, I can so imagine that must be very satisfying. The operational aspects are just as interesting. Uh, so the next question is also related to Suri, and that's um, what motivated you to create the resort brand and, and operate it yourself? Because there is a little bit of a backstory there. I'm not sure how much of that you want to talk about. Yeah, I, I, well, when I started, I understood uh, hospitality as a designer because I work with different brands. So I hired brand, uh, Alila to operate it. But after a few years, I started to see that I wanted to create the resort in my own um, voice, in my own preferences. And when I took it over a couple of years ago, that's where everything came into sync because the hardware of the design and the operations and the software of choosing the right people to deal with guests came together. So it was almost as an accident, but now that we have it, I think it incorporates all my interests and concerns from sustainability to cultural understanding to just generally uh, enjoying the lifestyle element of the hotel. So that's how the brand came about. Fantastic. It's a complement to SCDA. You think of SCDA, we design the hardware. So Suri can conceptualize the experience, the programming. That's a great explanation. Um, uh, so this is a, another question about Suri Bali particularly. Um, in terms of the current situation with the COVID-19, the operations of the resort, and, and how do you envision how that might change uh, and how, you know, what, how it will need to change to cope with the new normal? Right. Yeah, we've had to close for a few months. We're happy to say that we have to keep all our staff because the staff of the core of the hotel... In terms of the new normal, to start with, I think our hotel is remotely accessible. It's not in a very busy place. But beyond the baseline of keeping safe, you know, every hotel has a practice, safe hygiene, uh, and their protocols, because we are part of leading hotels of the world, so we follow their protocol. I think the pandemic also uh, requires that people travel differently, experience a holiday differently. Maybe they're more likely to go to a excessively remote place to relax, uh, to take a bit longer time at a destination because travel has become a bit of a hassle. So when people are there, they can stay five, six days. Um, beyond that, I think everyone is thinking what the future hosp hospitality might be. And I think it goes beyond um, hardware or, or, or sanitizing or and so on and so forth. It has to do with the change in people's attitude. But I've seen the appetite for people to travel. We've seen bookings coming back up again, but mostly for next year, where okay. people will feel safe again when the vaccine is developed. Interesting. And I'm curious, this is not a question from the audience, this one's from me. I'm, I'm, I think we talked about this earlier, but I'd love to have you chat about a little bit um, about how you've been keeping your staff occupied uh, while the hotel's been closed. Um, we, we were at half strength and then everybody went home, but they, they are still employed. Uh, only key staff are in like, security and engineering. We took the opportunity to revamp some of the structures that needed to be revamped because hotel is closed and also reinforce our, our operations and also take the time to conceptualize what the new hotel concept of being sensitive environment can be since we're in partnership with Palais. So it's a good time for us to rethink and reset. Yeah, I can imagine. Uh, so the, there is another question here about uh, well-being. So it's beside culture, sustainability, what other elements um, do you <clears throat> see being important when designing for well-being in interiors? 
aside from the besides the culture spirit, and sustainability, what else? Right. Is, um, so, what other important so, uh, factors? Right. We have different programs. I mean, we have yoga classes. We, uh, for the longest time, we we have on on site acup acupuncturists, and those are the soft programming of the space. Uh, we bring in gas healers, so those are programming. But beyond culture and sustainability, wellness, I think it's about also balance. When a design is in harmony and balance, you feel comfortable and feel rested. It's a choice of colors and materials. But beyond that, I think if you have a beautiful site, you can tap on the energy of the site. You feel good just being there. Well, Bali particularly. <laughs> yeah. Um, so there's a question now about the sorry the precautions and any future projects that might be in the works um, to I guess uh, make the hotel safe post -pro post -po pandemic sorry <laughs> um, mm. and do you see hotels coming back to normal or post COVID do you think that's an, an inevitability or Will we forever be changed because of this situation? I think there'll be a change. There'll be a change. And, uh, you know, we are, we are most interested in that. We had conversations, listening in seminars. Many hotels that we're working with, because I also designed for some other brands, they've developed meticulous cleaning and sanitizing aspects, including putting seals on doors or using phone to check in or high touch points areas where they sanitize. I think all that can be done, but beyond that, I think it's the psychological uh, wellness and safeness that's important. How do you impart that with the guests, make them feel safe without feeling you're going to a hospital, wearing PPP equipment and spraying down everything. So I think it's a balance, but the industry is interesting. It's developing and it needs a lot of rethinking, which also means it's a very exciting time to be in this industry. Time for change. Mm, I imagine. Uh, we have one more question about uh, technology and innovation uh, and how do you associate that with the well-being concept? Uh, I think the yeah, the sorry. technology, innovation, and well-being. Uh, I think there's a balance. Technology is there, and it's going to enhance well-being. But I, I think how you integrate technology without being intrusive, so that it can recognize preferences or or help you enjoy uh, the particular place, is important. But in the end, no amount of technology can replace um, the warmth of human interaction. Right, there was a lot of talk about like having robots to massage you or different things of social distancing. But at the end of the day, I, I, I do think that I'm optimistic we'll resolve this in one way or the other with a vaccine. And people want to come back and enjoy the place in a more safe but still traditional way. I hope so. <laughs> We've had a lot of questions um, about well-being, but there's there's one more now about your work and SCDA, and the question is about what you're working on, uh, and you know, future projects and, and something that we might be able to look forward to in the near future. Anything that you're able to talk about? Um, I would like to do uh, more resorts, but it's not easy to do resorts uh, based on how I want to do it because when you do a resort there's usually a client and there's usually a brand so depending on the particular brand if there's alignment is great um, we are doing many different projects we are starting to do more cultural projects like the Singapore Art Museum uh, we are doing things in different places uh, but most of them uh, are not all hotel related they, they can be mixed use development so on those projects, we try to, to redefine and rethink how we can bring some of these elements into a city project. It's not the easiest thing to do. We have to rely more on technology to be sustainable there. Nice. Um, we have one more here, which is <laughs> it's quite a funny one. Um, what would you tell 27-year-old Su Kian Chan <laughs> if you were able to go back in time, what would you tell your younger self about design and how to approach it? What life lessons would you teach yourself? I, I, I think the life lesson is really looking back. 
is really to decide very clearly. And it, for me, it kind of just happened because I couldn't get my license easily when I came to Singapore because of my degree and so on and so forth. So actually, that was actually a good thing. When, when, uh, uh, when you are 27 and being a designer, especially an architect, uh, you need to realize that global, globalization is there. Even though now you, you see a bit of backtracking, you need to engage globally. And, and in order to do that, you need to be very specialized in an aspect of design so that you can export your service. Um, and you, it's okay to work for other people for a few years and not to just start on your own because you have a commission from your auntie or your parents. Because working for other people means learning very quickly by observing and understanding how you organize an office, so on and so forth. So taking it slow for the first few years, uh, it happened to me because I moved around, but I think that's still good advice. I still say that to some of my students. Yeah, I think that's great advice, absolutely. Um, well, I think we've actually got through all of the questions from the audience. Um, oh, actually, no, sorry, there's one more here. Again, related to the current situation, um, someone's asking about how you're presenting material to clients at the moment digitally, um, in particular material boards, which are obviously mm. normally very tactile, touchy-feely. Um, have you had to present something like that in this period of time? Yes. Um, we always wanted to do that, and it's taken a bit. So now that we are all on Zoom, even today, we are only 25% back in the office. We have had to digitize quite quickly and use the cloud to create cloud libraries of materials. And when these materials, while you can't touch and feel them, uh, technology has allowed it to be so well represented uh, that we, it looks almost real. And, and, and then that gets incorporated to realistic rendering. And when, <coughs> when the materials are shortlisted, then we just send the samples, the actual samples. We replicate the, the digital sample, the digital palette with the real palette. So in, in a way, the process is going a little bit backwards. We use the digital library to put our samples first. <coughs> Sorry. Um, ah, so that it seems like the transition has been relatively smooth for you. I, I was surprised and the, the bottleneck was really myself because uh, once I figured out how to use the technology, I think the, it, was, it was a lot easier for the whole office too. Um, to be able to use the cloud to share uh, details and to be able to render in the cloud. So in a way you transcend uh, geography and I was able to communicate with my various officers on a level platform. Everybody seems to be in the same room and that was helpful. That's really good to hear. Well, I think that's all we have time for tonight. We should probably cut it short before I have a coughing fit. Um, okay. Thank you so much, Sukian. It's been an absolute pleasure chatting with you again, and I hope it's not too long before we get a chance to catch up in real life. But um, thank you from myself and from Cola for your time, and uh, please stay safe. Thank you, Susie. Okay. Thank you very much. Good night. Good night.